from time to time we all get uh, pains and aches and discomforts, and our next guest is an expert in helping us to deal with that. Dr. Gariley back with us today. And um, you're going to talk about something today that I think is uh, maybe we don't hear about it too much or know about it too much, but it's something that causes some discomfort in some people, uh, either facet or facet, depending on how you want to pronounce it. Uh, facet joints, what are they and where are they in the body? Good morning, uh, Rob. Uh, facet joints are uh, joints that help us move, basically help the spine move. Uh, the articulation of each vertebral body with the level above and below it is through these joints that we call facet joints. Uh, and you're absolutely right. Just because you have back pain doesn't mean that you have a problem with uh, a disc degeneration or a nerve impingement. Uh, there are several other structural issues that can cause back pain. And in the past, we've talked about a few of those, sacroiliac right. joints being one of them. Facet joints, uh, I brought uh, my skinny friend, as you call him, uh, and um, just to orient you, this is the, uh, the pelvis, this is the back of the spine, the front of the spine, and um, if we get a close-up of it, you'll see that each vertebral body is attached to the level above and below it through very, very small joints called facet joints. Now these joints give you the ability to have movement. So all the movement in the spine is really through these joints. And if you notice when you bend backwards, when you bend backwards you put more pressure on the joints. When you bend forward you take the pressure off these joints. And uh, when patients have issues with these joints, oftentimes they complain of pain upon standing, which is relieved when they sit down or, or lay down. Uh, often uh, common complaints are, I can't stand in the kitchen and cook because standing is very painful, but then when I start to walk and move around, the pain gets mm -hmm. better, mm -hmm. or uh, I feel very stiff in the morning. It's a very... Um, it's very similar to common arthritic conditions of any joint in the body. When you wake up and your hands feel stiff, and then as you move them, they loosen up a little bit, these tiny joints do exactly the same right. thing. Obviously, if somebody has just, they just know it hurts, and they don't really know why it hurts or what's going on, so that means they come to see you and the diagnosis. How do you diagnose this condition? Uh, really, the best way to diagnose facet syndrome is through a good history and physical examination. The history of the patient and what brings the pain on, what relieves the pain, uh, gives us a lot of clues. And then certain uh, examination findings, especially uh, the type of discomfort they feel with various movements, lateral bending and so forth, tells us how these joints are being affected. So you may actually act, ask the person to bend to the right and the left, back and forward, and, and does that hurt type of thing? Absolutely. So for example, if someone has a slight curvature of the spine, the joints on one side would wear out a little bit faster, just like uh, if the alignment on your car is off, you have more wear on the brake pads and the tires on one side. As a result, pain may be unilateral or one-sided. And during a physical examination, bending to that side may create more pain, and bending away from that side may alleviate the pain. And that gives us clues, among other things that we do on the physical exam. Who's more likely to have this condition? Certain age groups, certain men or women? Uh, how does it fall? Majority of patients with facet syndrome tend to be the elderly population primarily because when the degeneration of the spine occurs and the discs start to wear, we lose height. Yeah. And as we lose height and the vertebral bodies get closer together, these joints also become more compressed and there's more wear and tear. Uh, However, people can develop facet syndrome because of trauma to their back, which has resulted in disc degeneration prematurely, uh, and uh, posture and a variety of trades uh, can lead to back pain that's coming from the facet joints. Well, once you've analyzed the situation and figured out that's what it is, how do you treat it? The first step in treating any arthritic condition is really the use of non anti-inflammatory medications to try and reduce the inflammation. Uh, the reason patients 
feel pain is because this is an inflammatory condition. So we recommend icing the back on a regular basis, uh, using anti-inflammatory medications, whether it's over the counter or through prescription, is really the first step. Uh, that can be combined with f various, various physical therapy exercises to specifically strengthen the paraspinous muscles in the back. The paraspinous muscles are the muscles that give you support and unload the joints and give you some uh, structural mm -hmm. integrity. So strengthening those muscles. If that doesn't work, then we resort to steroid injections and uh, you can really uh, get into more uh, interventional procedures by things like radiofrequency ablation where you actually ablate the nerves that go mm. to the joints to make sure that the joints are yeah. no longer uh, sensed. I think, I think our residents appreciate the fact that you start off with a conservative approach, you know, medication, exercise, and, and you said the ice uh, can help as well before you get into it too much high-tech stuff, so I think people appreciate that. Absolutely. Starting off conservatively. All back pain needs to be evaluated primarily, and it needs, then the treatment needs to follow a very specific algorithm which starts with very conservative approach and then works its way up all the way to sometimes surgical intervention. Right, I was going to say, sometimes people walk in the door and the first thing the doctor says is, well, let's schedule you for surgery. Obviously, that's the last resort in your case. In most cases, that's the last resort unless there's a specific reason why you mm -hmm. can't wait. Yeah, yeah. Dr. Gariley, always a pleasure. Thank you for coming by. You'll be back in a couple of weeks with more information about our backs and uh, how we can be healthier. Thank you for having me. Thanks for having us uh, coming on the program today. Good to have you with us today. Dr. Gariley, again, uh, some good information for you folks. The number there on the screen, if you're experiencing back pain, give their office a call, and they can probably give you some good help and assistance there in dealing with all of that. We'll be back. More guests coming our way. Stay with us.